Hey everyone, it's Vicki Brown from Messy Table Studio. I have a project today that I was just, it just occurred to me that I needed to make some changes. You know, I've been doing a lot of purging, repurposing, reusing, and now we're recycling an old idea. So I have a lot of mini books, and I didn't have any bookends to keep them up, so I took some press board. I think this is press board, composite wood of some sort. And I glued, I painted these to make them look like old books. But when you use them as a um, bookend, you never see the artwork. Plus, the books sit up high on it because it's got thickness to it. So they look a little weird, and this isn't straight. So what I've done is peeled these off. They were just glued on. And then I took them and put them in here and then I'm going to drill holes in these and I'm going to make them books. I can't see throwing them away because I really like the way they look and this one has my initials on it so who wants it after that so um, the only downside to doing this is I can do it on this one I can drill the holes here and it won't interfere with any writing because there's no writing on the ends this way. I would have made this the front but if I drill holes I would have covered up the water word watercolor, and as it is, um, I, I like it the way it is. All right, so then there's this one, and I'm not going to do anything else to it. I'm going to leave them exactly the way they are. So it doesn't matter how I put these together, either front to back, back to front makes no difference. Well, I did. Well, it will. If I turn it this way, <laughs> it's going to be a little weird. I don't want to drill through the words, but I don't have a choice. On the back side, it'll only drill through the blue. But if I make this the front of the book, I'm going to drill through the word sketch. So, you know, it's it's kind of a win one, lose one. So um, I'm going to drill through the front this way. And what I'm going to drill through is the word journal. But then on the back side, it'll say sketch, and then bookmaking, so on and so forth. So, you know, eh. I could sand them and do all that stuff, but honestly, I don't feel like going into that great a detail. It's just a novelty thing. So, of course, I'm going to make this a Coptic book. Don't know what kind of paper I'm going to use yet. Haven't decided. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out in the garage. I'm going to measure my holes. And then I'm going to... Um, drill the holes. I don't know if I'll use three or five. Probably three will be the best I do. And then I will make these into Coptic books. Alright, so that's one recycle project. Let me see if I can show you the other one. Okay, so let me pull these out of the trash. Because I am trashing these. While I was recycling paper, sorry, this is flashy white. While I was recycling and cleaning up yesterday, I was dividing up my white cardstock from my white paper, uh, Tyvek, photo paper, and watercolor paper. Um, I had all these strips from old projects. I am going to trash these because I just know they've been sitting there for a couple years now. I know I'm not going to use these well. Wait, what is that? Oh, there are big ones in there. I thought I got them all out. All right, so... These are under a quarter of an inch, and what I really need is, I mean, these are under three quarters of an inch. What I really need to do, what I want to do, is three quarters of an inch. So, these will go back into the trash. Found another one. Hang on. Whoa. Here it is. There's another one I missed. Thought I picked them out. Huh? So, I've been making my own handmade mini books, mini books for my Artemat stuff. So what I've done is I've cut strips. I will cut this into three quarters of a strip and then turn it this way and do it in half inch. So each one of these is three quarters of an inch wide. No, three quarters of an inch tall, half an inch wide. And they make little tiny books after I wrap them. Another way I will recycle is to take art that I have doodled on 
let me push these up, scanned. And I've used these papers over and over, so what I will do is I will take this paper and I will take these little bitty pieces that I have in these little little crates. I will take these little bitty pieces and just put a group together and glue a piece of this around the little pieces of paper and then cut it and maybe put some walnut stain on them to age them a little bit and use them for mini books for display. Um, I have a large thing of this and the only thing you're going to see when I do this is just the spine of the book so when I do it I try to make sure well, this one, you don't. there's no doubt you're going to see the whole design, but it probably won't be any larger than this little strip right here. So each one of these might be cut down in half. Um, this one, I will try to position the book so that you can see the green and not so much all the white. So that's, I've got strips in here that are small like this. There you go. I don't do a lot of collage stuff anymore. Um... So this is how I use up my papers. I sew them, I make them into all kinds of things, but today, today, what I'm working on is making them into little books. See, here's a little piece. I can't stand wasting that. So what I'll do is I'll turn it this way and I will cover the book only in the colorful pieces and the rest of this will be discarded. Here's another one that if it meets the requirement for measurements, then I just fold it over make a crease, glue it onto the little book, and all you're going to see is that itty-bitty strip right here. That's it. I would rather do this and use up my stuff than to throw it all away. I mean, it just seems like such a waste to me. I took a lot of time to design these, to carve the stamps, to do the stamping, then I photocopied, I mean, I scanned them, and then I've been using them, like this piece. This is a big, huge piece. I might save this for another book where the book is only going to be wide enough to do through here and maybe this will be the cover for the inside. This will be the inside paper. So I, I don't like wasting this kind of stuff. I, it just drives me crazy to waste it. I can't stand throwing this stuff in the trash. Like this one. This one might go in the trash unless I can get a good good bookend off of it. I might use this portion of it and then the white, you know, I'll cut it down to like this so on and so forth. I just can't stand wasting this stuff. I'm crazy about that. All right, what else is in here? Oh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, just look at this one. Why would you want to throw that away? It's so colorful. I can understand certain ones you'd want to toss, but I just, even this, I mean, I just, I can't do it. <laughs> I just can't do it. Maybe that's why I've had to purge other stuff to make room for all of this. All right, so I will show you how to do the little mini books, but it might be in stages because it takes a while for the glue to dry. Now, these are not sewn in the book. They're glued. No sewing involved whatsoever in this. And it's only a fake book. You, you can only open it so far, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be glued on the inside and the bottom of the book because it's going to be glued on a miniature bookcase. So you don't, you won't see, the only thing you will see is the spine of the book and the top pages. And I have seen people, um, let's see, where are they? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I don't know where I put them. Um, I bought some fake book, mini books. They came from a foreign country. But when I got them, they were kind of squarish, which... That's not what exactly what I was looking for, but it would work. But the inside was foam core board. Well, granted, it's my time versus the cost, but I think people take a little more pride in handcrafting their own stuff than to use always somebody else's products, which does not satisfy my need to create things. So I created this from stamping and doing the um, December carve or carve December. Then I um, printed it off, cut it up and used it for other book covers and other projects. Then, uh, let's see, let me go get some of the ones that I just made. Okay, this is all made out of stuff that I had on hand. 
This is a little small book made out of, I think, coffee dyed paper that was left over from something else. This was from fodder school. And this is that large piece that you saw in the very beginning. A piece like this. This is an off cut from something like this. I had other papers in there. Yes, these are coffee dye papers. Um, these were leftover coffee dye papers from something else. The, end, the bottom cuts of the sheet. I saved those. I made them in a book. Not only that, but I taught myself, oh, these are stuck together, um, I taught myself how to make a hard bound book that opens. Okay, so not only did I recycle my things, but I taught myself something new. And then the ties were dyed by me, and they were a bed sheet that got ripped, um, and I didn't, just couldn't use it anymore. So I made a little book. Next one. I was going to, I was looking for a hardcover, couldn't find one, so I took a piece of corrugated cardboard, I tore the paper off, you know, the paper cover that goes over the corrugated part, cut it down, used the same print because green's my favorite color, used the same print for the spine. I did the three hole pamphlet stitch, I used this from Fodder School. This was leftover off-cut computer paper, and I made myself yet another little mini book. This was all leftovers from other projects, except for the, this. This was original from Fodder School. This one. This one did not go the way I thought it was going to, so it has a lot of layers of this paper on it to cover up where the spine cracked. I folded it too quickly, did not learn this process, uh, not this one. Where is it? I did not learn the process for making a hard, um, a hard book where you can fold it over. I did not use this procedure as well on this one that I used on this one, so I had to cover it up with yet more paper. Fodder school. This is just leftovers, and this is I think this is watercolor paper. Oh, this is computer paper. It was sewn in with three-hole pamphlet stitch. Then I took a. Um, Another piece of, I think it was, uh, what was it? Chipboard left over, a little teeny piece of chipboard left over from cutting these two pieces here. And then I covered it in paper, covered it up, and it didn't go well, so that I covered up the cover up. <laughs> Again, a fodder school flower, leftover paper. I just can't see wasting stuff. And see, it's, it's not a Coptic book, and yes, you can open it flat. I mean, it, you just hold it like this, and it doesn't give you much resistance to work on. Here's another one. This is leftover supplies, except for, well, the fodder school flowers were practice flowers. I already had the eyelets. I already had the linen thread, which is big and bulky. But I did that way on purpose, because I thought maybe I would use this for a miniature glue book, which I don't do glue books that often, but, you know. So that's a Coptic and I was trying to teach myself how to do the hard cover with the um, the spine, the hard spine on it. And I thought, yeah, let me just sew this together and be done with it. All right, so this is all leftover paper. All of it is leftover paper. Let me find the original. I don't know if I'll find it in this mess or not. Might have been where the print came from is I got it out of here as a leftover. I think so. So this was a, a strip. That was a leftover strip, or maybe it could have been half the bottom half of the paper, and made myself another book. So these books are all made from supplies that are readily available. I mean, it's not, I didn't buy any extra stuff because I already had it in my basket here, right? I leave this on my paper cutter and save all my off cuts like this. This is how I ended up with all that white paper and that cardstock I've been sorting, is doing stuff like this and then saving it because I couldn't bear to part with it. Oh, here it is. It's, this paper was from stuff like this. That's the blue one, the last one I showed you. That's where this came from. These were off cuts. So save your little pieces. You know, don't save it for 20 years. That's crazy. Um, and then make little teeny books and give them away as gifts to friends. Or sell them in an Etsy store. You know, it doesn't really matter. It just save your stuff and recycle it.
Okay, so let me see. The next part of the video will be me gluing these together and showing you how I make these little mini books. It's not a top secret thing. It's all over the internet. It's all over Pinterest. It's not like I'm showing you something that I created myself. No. But this stuff is stuff I carved, I printed, I scanned, I used, and now I'm recycling it. Okay, let me move my light out of the way so you'll have the glare. All right, so this is the part where I make the mini books. Let me let me show you this. This is bookbinding, webbing. You can use a lot of other things, but this I think is a Lino project, L I N E O. Lineco. Maybe it's C O. Anyway, I'll put the link in the description box. And you I'll, I'll show you what you do with it. First, let me do this part. I want to get carried away. All right, so I'm just going to take a little blob of books. I don't really care about the thickness of the books. All I care about is that I just get a little a little pinch of them. They don't have to be thick books. They don't have to be lined up perfect. Nothing has to be perfect about this because they're going to go someplace else. So then I take glue. Let me do it this way. I got to hold these guys. Take a clip. I, am I use? I think I've used up all my pink clips. I like using my pink clips the best. Actually, I have little mini clips. What am I doing? Er. Okay, this is going to get really loud because I'm going to pour them out. Okay. So I take the little clips. I kind of straighten them up, kind of. Just put the little clip on here. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if the clip leaves a mark on it because no one's going to see this. It's a fake book. If you were doing a real book, making a real book, this matters. All right, so I'm just going to take my glue. I think it's on this side. Let me scoot it down a little bit. And I'm going to squeeze some glue on the end of the book, which will now become the spine. And I'm just going to dab the glue on there. And if I was more prepared, I could do the cover and the dabbing of the glue at the same time, but I'm not. So we're not. <laughs> so I try to put these this way and then I set them on the desk. All right, so what you want to do is get some scrap paper, which is my basket. And I'm looking for something kind of skinny, which is this stuff right here. Take some scissors and I'm going to cut the white off because I don't want a lot of white. There we go. So I'm going to take the blue cut it I'm going to take the glue end I'm going to kind of center it in the paper I'm going to eyeball it Let's see if it's wide enough Oops. I'm going to take my glue, run it across here, and fold it. I'm going to take glue here on the opposite end, wrap it around, and fold it. I don't even try to measure anything, and then I'm going to run it down here to make it flat. So if you're doing a regular book, you would not do it this way. Then I'm going to take my scissors. That's pretty good. Actually, that's pretty good too. Hmm. And I'm just going to kind of trim it off a little bit. Now, remember what I said. You're not opening this book. It's only going to sit on the shelf, so the only thing you're going to see is this right there, and then the top portion. All right, so I'm going to leave this to dry. 
And then because these are spread out, I set it down on a flat surface and let it dry. I mean, it's really not that hard. This is so simple. You can do this with anything. Okay, so I got my measurements from books that I'd ordered off the internet. Some blanks, which was this portion here. And I measured their blanks and made my blanks the same, about the same size. All right, so here we go. Squeeze them together. I put glue on the end here. And you can also put a little bit over the edge so it makes it easier for the paper to get on there so you get it at least on the bottom part. I think this one I'd like to make red. I'm going to take this, hold it down. glue on the out, outer page, roll it over, and mash. I usually, when I'm in a hurry, I just make these, put them on clips, set them upside down with the bare pages and let them dry a little bit so it's so they don't come out like this did while I'm trying to glue stuff. All right, I'm going to cut this off because it's excess paper, it's unnecessary. I'm going to rub it along the flat surface. And put me some clips on it and let it dry a little while because I'm going to do some trimming on it. And there you have it. Um, it takes like it takes a while to cut all this, but it takes two seconds or less to actually make the books. I might get 20 books out of this. It just depends on how fat or how much of a pinch I take out of the books before I. Um, before I make them. So there's how to reuse things for miniatures, like if you want to put them on a, a dangle. Let me show you. This is, as an ex this is an example of how I use my scraps. Now, this is a dangle, a book dangle. And this book does open. There's the, um, the spine to it. It opens. And this is sewed. I did sew these in case whoever likes the dangles, you see the, the thread. And they do open. No problem. All right, so there's that one. Then this one does not open. This is just cardstock covered in um, paper and then folded over exactly the way I did this, except for this has cardstock in it and it also has a, um, a more rigid spine, I think, is, which is also not, either, not cardstock, chipboard, sorry. Very thin leftover chipboard. This is chipboard. It's very thick chipboard. I covered the inside just like you would do at the end of the book, so on and so forth. So these are all great things that you can do with your leftovers and not pay for anything else. You've already paid for it. You might as well use it. This was leftover jewelry things that I had. I didn't like the small chains. And so I found some junk ring, jump rings and some dangle things. And I made these book dangles. Very easy to do. It's, it's not hard at all or I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> all right, so there's that. All right, let me show you one more thing. Okay, here is a flower pot that I drew stuff on with the... Um, Posca pens. The only thing is when you put them outside, they flake from being wet when you water your plant. They flake off. Doesn't matter how much you seal it, it doesn't stay on there for a long time. So I brought them in the house because I was mortified. <laughs> All right, so here's something else you can do. You can do this before or after you put the book together, but you can use these makeup brushes, which is... Uh, all these are makeup brushes, brushes that I bought... I think in Dollar Tree or off of, um, maybe I bought this in Dollar Tree. I shadow brush, yes. I bought, some of these came from Dollar Tree. Some of them came from Amazon. They're just makeup brushes. All right, so I'm gonna take me some Tim Holtz water, no, Ranger water walnut stain. 
And you can do this before you make the book, before you put the cover on it, or you can do it afterwards. It doesn't really matter. But I like to do it for the whole book. I'm only doing it right here on the top because that's all the text you're going to see is right there. And then I might do it here a little bit on the edges. Not trying to make it so brown. So I only, I only use it on the edges that people will see. The rest of it, it's a waste of ink to do the whole stinking book. For me, for what I'm going to use it for. It's just a waste. So there's the top of this, a little of that. Maybe a little on the spine, on the edges where it goes over the sides. That's it. It's done. So now it looks, it looks aged. There you go. So, use your leftovers. Don't chuck all your leftovers. Say, you know, you don't have to save like I did, but save your leftovers so you can make cool stuff with them. I think this is a lot of fun. Um, let's see, I need to cut this off a little better, which means I will have to do this again. The reason I don't do it on the text before I put it in the book is so that I can do the book. You know, the white parts of the material because this is just computer paper and good ordinary plain white cardstock and there's a little book it's that simple it is just that simple okay that's it for this part then I'm going to show you the other part in the next part of this video the um, bookends I took apart one thing I forgot to say when I was doing this is to talk about the, the webbing, mm -hmm. the book webbing. When bookmakers make books, they take the text block, put a little glue down on the end, a lot of them will take a brush and brush it on there, but this is not going to be really true to form for what's actually done to make the book open to a certain extent. And you put a little glue here on the ends. Let me smooth that out and get that off, a lot of it off of there. Then you take the little piece of webbing and you can either wrap it around the text block or you can let it fly out like wings. Take more glue to make sure there's a connection between what's on the bottom and on the t top, which is the webbing. Sorry, I have a pin in my mouth. Um, and then you let it glue. Then when it's dry, you can use the wings to put underneath paper to hide, hide it. Or what I'll do for this one, because it's not going to be a book that really opens, is that I'm going to trim off the web all around, and then I will put that down on the paper. This is not necessary for what I'm doing, but you will see a lot of people doing this if you want your little books to open, and you don't want to sew them. You can do it this way. Now, some people will sew their books in kettle stitch or some kind of a stitch, three-hole pamphlet, whatever, and then they will put the webbing on it so that it's extra strong when you put it down on your paper and you go to open your book. So there is that issue right there, that, that example. I'm sorry, I was gluing some books together watching a movie and all of a sudden it occurred to me that the webbing sitting on the table and I didn't bother to explain about the web. Ta-da! All right, so I still have some others right here drying off. And I'm going to finish the rest of these and my movie. Okay, so this is the end of the video, and this is show and tell. The crates, the four crates that I started the video with, these are them. And I filled up about four and a half crates with the paper, and I got about four and a half crates worth of books. Um, I don't know how many books there are per crate. Some are a little fatter than others, but they're all about consistently about the same an eighth of an inch uh, thickness for width I got all kinds of different papers I had I used the basket that I showed in the beginning of the video and then I went and looked for some of my stuff that had black and white on it 
so I did pick some black and white out. Uh, let's see what else did. Oh, and I found some more pink and a different kind of like goldy yellow type color. So here they are. Here are the finished little books. It took about three hours, which is really no big of a deal because I was watching a movie series and no big deal. I mean, it went really fast. Once the glue on the spine started to um, get a little gummy, then I went to do the paper, and then I, when I closed the little books up, I went ahead and trimmed them off, and here they all are. So um, you can stay to the end. Let me say that I did not get to um, this project yet, and I will do that in another video because... I didn't have time in this one. It's already over what I like to use for time. So uh, I will do this in another video. And I might take you out in the garage. And all I'm going to do is just drill holes. And it's really not that exciting. So um, let's see what else. I think that's it. So here's my all my books. And I will put pictures at the end of the video. Thanks, everybody. Bye.